could you all take a few seconds to ask yourself two questions? First, are you a good person? And second, what could you do to be even better? I think what's obvious is that we all want to be good people. We all want to have a positive impact on the world around us and on the people around us. But how? What does it mean to be good? What does it mean to have a positive impact? And how to improve ourselves continuously as human beings? I think there's no more important question in life than those. And for me, I spent the past 10 years living different lives, always asking in the side of my mind, what can I do to become a better person? I spent a year working in farms all around the world, in New Zealand, Alaska, Mongolia, Ghana. I spent a year writing a book about it. The book was bad, but I did it. I spent a year training hard to become an Ironman. I spent four years working for a magazine of philosophy, and I'm now the CEO and co-founder of a company employing 50 people across Europe. And guess what? I haven't found the answer. Of course not. But those experiences brought me to two ideas that I thought might be worth sharing with you today. The first idea, it took me 25 years to understand, is that you can't really help others until you've learned how to help yourself. For long, I've tried to turn to others because I thought it was what I had to do, but it was too early. I remember before going to the farms, spending a few months in Benin to teach to orphans how to speak French. I felt like a good person. But it took me a few days to realize that there was something weird. What mattered to me was not what I was doing. It was the perception that others would have of what I was doing. And the best moment of my trip was when I could post on Facebook a picture of me holding a skinny African baby and get tons of likes. What I mean is, as long as when you try to be a good person, you want everyone to know about it, when you struggle to do something good, you want to make sure everyone heard about it, there is something wrong. Being helpful should not be about feeling helpful or making sure everyone knows that you've been helpful. It should be about making sure the person you help feels helped. And that's not easy because we all have this so-called ego, which is the self-representation of ourselves. And working on our ego, making sure that we perceive ourselves roughly the way we are, not trying to boost it artificially in the eyes of the others, is one of the most difficult but the most essential job we all have to start with. There's a quote from Nietzsche that I like, saying, I would like all your neighbors and the neighbors of your neighbors to become unbearable to you. You would then have to create by yourself a friend with an overflowing heart. And it is something I have especially witnessed and lived personally in love relationships. When you are in a couple with someone without being yet totally one with yourself, you feel great because it's so great to have someone giving you love and attention. But how can you authentically love someone else when you don't even love yourself? For me, it always failed. But the good news is, after a few years of introspection, working on my ego, listening to my fears, understanding my anger, I started to feel at peace with myself. And a few months later, I met a girl, and a few months later, she became my wife. And I was at the end of my studies here in that school, and that's the moment when I started asking myself a question, which was, what can I do now? What's going to be my life? What's going to be my job? Or the way I asked it to myself was, how can I find a job that maximizes my impact on the world around me? I had ambition. I wanted to have the deepest, the widest impact possible around me. And that's how I learned this second idea about what it means to have positive impact. 
So at that moment, my feeling was that the best impact I could potentially have was in helping others do with themselves the job I had just made with myself, giving them time or content to think about themselves, for themselves, and become more self-conscious and more fulfilled. So I took a job for a magazine of philosophy with the objective of increasing as much as possible the number of our readers, the ones that were supposed to benefit from the content we are creating. And it was great, it worked well, but once again, after a few months this time, I realized I was lying to myself. On the one hand, I really wanted to be a good person. But in the meantime, I didn't care at all about my readers. I never thought about them. I didn't even like them. The only thing that mattered to me was my numbers, my growth, my business. I could have been selling socks or ties online, would have been exactly the same. I was like a good teacher, giving good classes to students, while despising each and every of them. Or like a doctor, trying to increase the number of patients he sees every day, not because he cares about their health, but because he wants to spend less time with each of them and make more money. In those three examples, me, the teacher, the doctor, are we bad people? I think not. Are we having impact? Yes, we do, definitely. But can we say we're having a positive impact? I don't think so. I realized there was something missing to be able that the impact we're having was positive. So be careful, that's the moment when it gets super cheesy. For me, what was missing was love. For my readers, I didn't have any emotional involvement, emotional commitment, not any resonance. And the conviction I got was that the only signal proving that the impact you are having is being positive is that it is made, filled with love. And therefore the question should be how to dedicate most of our time and energy for ideas or for people that we love. And when asking this question, the first thing that comes to mind is we should not start with our job. If we want to be good people, if we want to have positive impact, let's start with the people we spend most time with, our friends, our family, our dog, whatever. And then, when thinking of a job, what's obvious is that the impact, if you want it to be positive, it's not a question of quantity. It's not a question of scale. So it's not a question of maximizing it. It's a question of depth. Two years ago, I launched a company. I'm selling insurance against cyber attacks for SMEs. Do I love the SMEs I'm protecting? Not specifically but I'm not lying on myself, to myself on this one. Yet, I've now hired 50 people, and I can tell that I love each and every of them. I can think or speak with each of them and feel joy about sharing this adventure with them. Maybe not every day, maybe not everyone, but overall, I'm pretty confident when I say that today, I'm having positive impact on those 50 people. But as you can see, the scale is tiny. I'm not changing the world. I'm not Elon Musk, and I'll never be. But does Elon Musk love anyone? <laughs> does he want to change the world because he loves humanity, or because he wants to prove something to himself? I don't know, and it's not the matter. But what I want to say is, if we want to be good people with positive impact, we don't need to see big. We don't need to be super ambitious. We just have to focus our energy on what and who we love. Thank you.